Welcome back to part two. Delighted to still be in the company of the only player to make more than 100 starts for both Sheffield clubs. Wednesday and United, he is Lee Bromby, who's already entertained us for 20 minutes. He's got another 24 to go now in the company of Dom Howson, the Sheffield Stars, Sheffield Wednesday expert, it says uh, down here. Go uh, that far. You wrote that script? I definitely yeah. didn't. <laughs> so, right. Dom and I, I've seen, a, I can't speak with the same authority as Dom because I don't see all the games, but I've seen two or three lately, so we'll compare notes. Uh, but we're also going to compare notes on the number of players that have played for both the city mm. teams. And it is, well, I can only go modern day. It is an incredible list. How many How many do you think? Uh, you've probably seen on Twitter how many it is, but still. How many, I, how many I can't would you say. I give it away. I've already seen. You already I've done seen. my homework already, so I've got what a good idea who it is. How many do you reckon? Modern day. Modern day. Say within my career, which has been, well, uh, 10 years. Uh, 30 or 40. <laughs> <laughs> say, yeah. uh, 40 years. Yeah. What do you reckon? I want, to, I want to have said more than signed or... Yeah, who've played, Loved. who've actually who played, played for played. both. And some of them have been on loan. How many do you reckon in that time? Can't be more than double figures. You're in about 10 or 15 then, do you? Yeah. Yeah. 27. Right. 27. I've got the list here. I'll tell you what, we'll come to the list in about five minutes' time. Let's talk about mm. Huddersfield Town. Um, you've seen a bit of Huddersfield, um, and you've seen them play Wednesday on more than, more than one occasion. What, what do you make, first of all, Dom? of them being, I think I'm right in saying, fourth in the championship. Mm. David Vargas has done an unbelievable job to turn it around in over a year. It does have to be said that uh, he was backed well in the summer. You know, I think they signed 13 players, but they've recruited on the whole superbly. And similar to Wednesday, really, this year, that I think they've been perhaps the surprise package yeah. that, you know, I, I, I'd add Reading in, I think, to the equation as well. I think Amsterdam's done a, a brilliant job there. But, uh, yeah, you know, they've got a settled side system. You know, they've made astute loan buys. People like Aaron Moy and Casey Palmer mm. have come in and added real quality. And, you know, signing Premier League performers is what they've done. And then... They, you know, they just consistently churned out results. They're, they're not a team who will blow opponents away. They, you know, right. All their victories, I think, have been by a one-goal margin. Yeah. But they are well organised and they're well drilled. And that is going to be a cracking okay. Yorkshire Derby a week on Saturday yeah, at, at Hills. Hillsborough. But, of course, Huddersfield have got a, a very lousy... Uh, record recently against Wednesday and I think yeah. under Carlos Carvalho they've won all three of the meetings so uh, yeah Wednesday with home advantage big crowd you, you still would you know give the edge to them I would say on that game you wouldn't say more than a goal either way would you no. again taking your point about Huddersfield's victories they're a relentless mm. team in the way they play and I, I see a similarity in the way Sheffield United are playing now mm. under Chris Wilder with the way Huddersfield are playing under David Wagner, Kachunga's a live wire up front as yeah. well. Eh? Oh yeah, no, he's, he's been a bad, brilliant buy. Yeah. yeah, again to come in and settle so quickly into a new league. I think he's chips in with nine, nine goals. Yeah. yeah, and you know he's been played a lot on the right of the four-two-three formation. So he's not even played in his preferred position up front. You know, Naki Wells has yeah. been leading the line for them. So, oh yeah, they've got a lot of dangerous players of Huddersfield. There's no getting away from it, and. At the point you were making there about Wednesday is that yeah they've been having trouble scoring goals, not keeping them out, yeah. and so that's why it's hard to see the four-all draw again that oh. we retreated to. Was it five years ago no when way. Jordan Rhodes got four goals at Hillsborough? You, you don't know. mention that name, Jordan Rhodes. Uh, sorry, we were getting, I forgot it was banned. Sorry, yeah, you were January, wading yeah. into difficulty there straight away with yeah. that. We might have to mention him again, by the way, before the end of the program. Uh, it depends, Lee, which way you look at stats and figures. You could say Sheffield Wednesday going well, one defeat in nine. Indeed, they are going well, points-wise. Uh, one at Newcastle in that spell. Only scored 11 in nine. A feeling that they're not playing well, which again can be looked at either way. You know, you could say, well, that's a good thing. They're not playing well, getting all these results. Which way, which way round are you looking at it, do you think? Um, I think, like we said before, the, the expectations are high on, on the team. I don't think they've, they've hit the ground running, but I think the players will know the, the type of player they've got in there, or the quality that they will start playing well. 
yeah. uh, and they'll start performing. Um, this league, it's not about performances, it's not about playing well, it's about getting results. Um, and we, we've seen that over the year with, years with the teams that have been promoted, your Cardiffs, back when I was at Sheffield United, they, they grind out results. Um, and if Sheffield Wednesday can stay in and around it, I think they've got probably the calibre of player that mm. you know can yeah. can come get them, to the fore. Come right to the fore at the right time. Hit a bit of form. You know, maybe now's the time to hit that form. You know, great result at Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, nobody, nobody saw that, did they? They weren't expected to win. Expected, yeah. um, Although they have so, lost four at home, Newcastle. Yeah, so home, yeah, which yeah, which is surprising. Yeah. yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Sheffield Wednesday get a bit of form in terms of performance. Like you said, results don't look too bad, uh, yeah. which the stats say. But I don't, I don't think you know everyone's too happy with the, the actual performance. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe style. The, no, they, they set the benchmark with the performance and that result at Newcastle that Lee just touched on. And I think that's again what has frustrated fans and observers yeah. that then in the two matches since they haven't kicked on. And again, they've gone backwards. You know, as soon as you think that, oh, everything's starting to click into gear and fall nicely into place, you then get two very mediocre, yeah. ordinary performances. You saw the Wolves game yeah. and the press and the press one cool. was even worse than the Wolves I one. Didn't and, see and, and so yeah, that's what I think will be, yeah, irritating Carlos Carvalho a lot that you know, he just uh, he can't get that level of consistency in the performance. But they are, to their credit, still grinding out the results and mm. they are still well placed. And as you say, in six. They've got the individual calibre. You look to Forestieri, mm. you look to Hooper coming back, you look to Callum McManaman, who you'd mm. expect to have a lot to offer. Wallace is there at the moment, who, you know, doesn't always start these days, but I, and mm. Adam Reach has started to show a little bit. So yes, there's a lot of positives, I, yeah, there's a lot to work with, there's, yeah. there's no doubt about it. And I think you've noticed, actually, with, since Gary Hooper, with him being out of the side, how mm. key he is, and he was just hitting form when he got his injury at Fulham, yeah. and he is, I for me, he's their natural goal scorer. And you know, I think that partnership between him and Forestieri, that is where they can get a lot of joy and they can do a lot of damage. And I think some of the chances that they have created in the last six or seven games, if they had a fit and firing Hooper available to them, yeah. I'm pretty confident he would have converted. You know, more of these you know, chances and turn them into goals. Yeah, certainly. My, my, my observation of the uh, the home game against Wolves, which was poor, as, as, as you say, was I just thought there were too many good players playing safe in possession mm. and what not taking that? responsibility to make things happen. It was going square, going backwards, and nobody mm. seemed to be. Apart from Hutchinson, yeah. who I thought was again excellent yeah. and drove forward two or three yeah. times. Yeah, Hutchinson is the driving force and has become the mm. heartbeat of this team, and I, I think that. It's going to be fascinating to see how Callum McManaman does. You know, he is again a, a player who's got bags of ability, and I think is, is someone that they needed to unlock. You know, really stubborn defences, particularly at Hillsborough, which they've yeah. they've struggled with this year. And yeah. the free flowing football that brought so many goals at home last year, it, it's just not there as no. much as it was before. Yeah, that's a lot down, I think, to the opposition giving and showing Wednesday plenty of respect, packing yeah. midfield and making life difficult. But I think Wednesday, you know, they, they we still expect more given how much money has been invested in this team. Sure, and it may still be on tap and be provided. Um, Huddersfield Town, and we're, we're, we're used to hearing about the difference, different methods that David Wagner's brought. Uh, you know, you, you get a first-hand observation of that, Lee. Just tell yeah. us how different it all, all is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's great for, uh, you know, us to, us to watch. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not there every day when they're, because they're training at different times. But, um, I mean, a normal week, uh, on a Monday, they'll be off. Uh, they'll train Tuesday a double session, Wednesday will be a double session, and Thursday, but they'll train evenings. Um, they're in the hotel for home games. Um, they've got their own chefs, and, and the, the preparations like absolutely immaculate, uh, which you'd, you'd expect from you know the, the German stereotype. There's nothing yeah. left unturned. Um, they're very intense with the work. They work very hard, mm. uh, and it's been great for us to watch some of the you know the new sessions they're doing and the, the sort of new ideas that they're bringing 
you know, to English football, and he's it, mm. been successful so far. Is that hard know? for players to get used to? The training at kickoff times at three p.m. or yeah, for, yeah, hundred like, percent. Yeah, I think I think at first, um, but I think you. you I mean, I don't know the stats, but I bet if you looked at the players that have left Huddersfield Town, I bet there's a lot of players that did leave. Um, and the type of player that left is probably a British older player. Um, <laughs> you, you know, the likes yeah. of, you probably can't change that type of player because they're used to a certain certain way of playing and a certain management and being in in certain days. Uh, the players of Huddersfield have got young players, uh, German or, or foreign players that David knows from from his experience. I mean, the setup at Huddersfield now with the, the director of football. Um, I know you touched on some of his signings. Uh, they've got a, a guy called Stuart Weber who's who's been there probably two seasons now, and he's been a massive part in this. Uh, David Wagner coming in and, and the signings coming in. Um, I think it's more of a continental. Uh, set up where he, he makes the signings and the managers there to coach them. Yeah. Um, so it's a different, totally different way but, of thinking. But the manager Wagner will have a big say in those. Signings, massive, a massive say, a yeah. massive say. Yeah, I think that you know a lot of them uh, will be his recommendation. Uh, but those two sort of yeah. work together in a management side, um, yeah. and it, he's been a, a big part in the signings. You look at the signings yeah. they've made um, over here, the loan signings. Now David won't have known them. Um, so, so the, the actual setup of the club is, is fantastic, mm -hmm. and that, that comes from, you know, Dean's put that into place. Yeah. Um, and I know you, your point. Yeah, I was going to say, you have to imagine and give a lot of credit, really, to David Wagner for yeah. staying put too, because yeah. again, what he's done he is hot property, and yeah. Yeah. there has been two or three clubs who've approached him, and and yet he's gone. No, there's a project to be done at Huddersfield, yeah. and other managers might have. Yeah. You know, you know, when they've got that opportunity, gone and grasped it, but instead he's gone, yeah. you know what, I've started something here at Huddersfield. So, yeah, you have to applaud him, I think, for that. He seems a thoroughly decent guy, and uh, mm. I was interested in what you were telling me before we went on air yeah. about the family ethos he's brought yeah. to squad get-togethers. Yeah, so yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, the last international break, um, all the players uh, were invited. They went, they went on a training camp uh, oh. in Spain. Um, and all the families were invited, all the children, all the wives, girlfriends, that was staff, players, uh, the management. Uh, and it's got that real, real family feel, the assistant manager and, and, and the manager, they bring the family to the training ground. Uh, it's nice. often you see their, their children running around. Um, you know, and it's got it's got a great feel. They're, they're really relaxed off the pitch. Yeah. Um, you know, which is th that continental feel again. Again, but when they're working, mm. there's a real um, seriousness to that. And, and, and just before we go about the Sheffield matters, your role effectively. I mean, yeah. you've got a grand title of professional development coach, but it yeah. effectively means you're under 18s manager. I think yes. is that right? Yeah. So that's a key critical age isn't it yeah. where you're looking to push players to the first team you're yeah enjoying it you've got one or two there that you are banging on the manager's door and saying have a look at so-and-so yeah I mean it's a, it's a great role for me it's a, it's a great learning uh, experience a good role to be in to learn sort of the management you, you know side of it but with the younger players so I don't get all the pressure and uh, I can make mistakes at that level and, it's and not learn about results anyway, no, it's not it? about results and I can learn obviously all the all the coaching side of it and get the experience that I do need. Um, now knocking on the manager's door, we've got these 18s and under 23, so they're the closest um, team to the first team. I, I sort of prepare them for the under 23s. Um, now at a club like Huddersfield, it's going to be tough now for a young player to break through yeah. um, because of the amount of players and the amount of investment mm. like Sheffield Wednesday have seen, Huddersfield have seen, it, it, it's making a lot harder for the young players to get in. You look at the players we're signing on loan yeah. are from Chelsea, yeah. you know, they're signing top players from Germany uh, that are scoring goals in the, in the top league there, so it would be really, really difficult yeah. uh, for a young player to break through. They'd have to be exceptional. Mm. Uh, now we've got some very good players, we won the under 23s league at Bramall Lane last season with, with yeah. a young team, some very good players. Um, but I think it's becoming increasingly hard because of the sort of international influx or the foreign influx of players and the investment that's coming into the championship for players to break through. It's you, very, sorry, I was just going to say, but in the long term for you, what are you hoping is the next step then with your coaching? Um, I, I mean, I, I, love, I love what I do. But I, I would love to one day be a manager, um, but th again, that's opportunity. Like we're talking about the the kids that are trying to break through now, for a young English coach or manager now to get a job, 
Um, there's, there's a lot of foreign influence, a lot of foreign ownership mm. in the championship. So for me, it's getting as much experience as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm completing all my coaching qualifications and, and you know, sort of try to be the best I can at my job and hopefully an opportunity might come up. It's good to see you doing well because you've had experience of foreign ownership. You were at Leeds, you were coaching yes. at Leeds. Uh, and you were made redundant by yes. a certain, uh, <laughs> was he Mr Chilino? Mr Chilino, yeah. No, I mean, it, it's funny, it, football's a ruthless uh, industry and, and, and a lot of people say, oh, it's, it's part and parcel of being a footballer, but mm. it, it doesn't make it any easier for uh, the people that are involved in it. Now, I, I love my time at Leeds. Um, you know, I got um, Community Player of the Year, I think, for two years running and, and it sort of was my club I loved. Um, being involved there, I support the club. It was really disappointing to leave. Um, I don't think I'd have left under the old ownership. You know, a lot of people said a lot of bad things about Mr. Bates, but for me, he, he, he was fantastic when I was there, and he was always a big part of the club. He's the one who offered me the job yeah. to be a coach, um, and I think. You know the foreign ownership. It's, it's it's great. It's exciting for for fans, and you know we all want the investment and, and the money in the game. Um, but you know it was it was disappointing for me at that time. But like you move on, and you yeah. know I'm I'm in a great place now and, and loving what I'm doing. Really, well, treat as you find. Um, words of praise for Ken Bates there. Words that you probably never thought you'd hear on Sheffield <laughs> Live TV. Um, Twenty-seven players on my list. Uh, that's coming up. But before we do, uh, Middlesbrough versus Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup third round on Saturday. Guess what I'm going to ask Dom Housen now? Guess what I'm going to ask him? Is Jordan Rhodes going to play, do you think, for Middlesbrough? Probably not. No, I, I think Rudy Gestead, yeah. it seems though they've signed him. And I think the other thing to bear in mind, and Middlesbrough have made it fairly clear that Jordan Rhodes is available to move on. And yeah. so, would they really want him to be cup, cup ties? And yeah, there's him, and there's David Nugent. And after signing Rudy Gestead, you know, it pushes them further yeah. down in the pecking order. So now I'm not expecting Mr. Rhodes to play on Sunday, but but you never know. And uh, it's just, uh, I think, a bit of a pity that it's a tie that, and, and the FA Cup, that I, f I feel as if that neither team will actually take that seriously yeah, yeah. they've I got bigger priorities and lots of changes in both there'll be wholesale changes yeah, yeah i think for both and uh yeah I, I, some, somebody's put it to me that it's almost like a, a winter break that carlos Carvalho will probably use this as a, to rest players yeah. it's, which is a, it's a pity because again you know i was brought up with the fa cup should matter and mm. uh, you know love watching it when i was growing up and you know, gradually you just feel as if we're going more and more away from Mind that and it's diminishing a bit. With, I agree with you, but with the size of squad Wednesday have, you'd expect a pretty strong team out there. Should and, be, yeah. And similarly, obviously, Middlesbrough. Mm. Uh, Gestead and Rhodes, I saw play for Blackburn together. It's ironic that Rhodes is li likely to leave because yeah. they were a pretty good partnership for, for Blackburn. You know? No, I agree, but again, yeah. how big will the crowd be at the Riverside? Very small. I, I imagine it will be small. And Just you and one <laughs> yeah, or two. yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> now then, let me ask you a question that nobody's asked you on Twitter is, do you think Wednesday will sign Rhodes? <laughs> Why would you do that to me? And you could have at least warned me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say no. no. Right. I, I, is his dad there? His dad is, yeah, oh, still at uh, Wednesday, that, yeah. Yeah, the goalkeeper. Th I, I'm convinced there's interest, but I'm not going to say any more than that because er, loads of clubs are interested in. You'd, if you were a championship manager, Lee. Who would you sign? Yeah, who Jordan, would you sign to Jordan get your Rose. goals? <laughs> yeah. Jordan Rose, yeah. Yeah. yeah but but the, the fact is that Middlesbrough again have come out and said that they, they re ideally they want to sell Jordan Rhodes on I a permanent do. basis and, and it's really from all the noises and things I get told uh, by people high up at Wednesday they're not in a position to shell out and pay the sort of money that would be required yeah. you know for, to sign Jordan Rhodes and th they're looking you know elsewhere but yeah you're right there has always been an interest there. And but if Middlesbrough can't get a buyer, and I think that's highly likely, and mm. the figures and the wages involved, they're going to have to loan him, aren't well, they? True, but th there is that possibility. You've got Aston Villa and Derby County, who, again, are ridiculously ambitious. And so if they are that desperate to sign Jordan Rose on a permanent basis, they could make it happen. Of all the clubs in the Championship, I think those are the two 
for mm. me. But you're right, it could well end up being a case where you've got half a dozen clubs, if it gets to the last day of yeah. the, the window, who will be doing all they can to try and sign and nobody, Jordan Rhodes on loan. And um, nobody wants to show their hand and sell them, I don't no, think. No, creeping well, along. no, I think a lot of deals are going to gonna go right down to the yeah. wire. And yeah, who knows? I, Jordan Rose on loan, I, I wouldn't rule out, but permanently I don't see it happening. I because, agree with because you. Because Wednesday always talk so who, much who about financial like fair play. Well, I, I think that uh, you know, what they want is a left back and a striker, but for me, you, you mentioned it in the first half of the show about your good friend Tom Lees. I worry about if Tom Lees breaks down and picks up an injury, that has always been a problem area for Wednesday throughout this season for me. Centre back cover, it, you know, it, it, you've got then only Glenn Leuven's, Sam Hutchinson, and Vincent Sasso. Now, Sam Hutchinson is such a driving force in midfield, key performer. I, I wouldn't want, well, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to move him. Yeah. And so, the centre back might be an area still that they should consider, you know, thinking if they can get a loan in or if they're looking to buy someone permanently. I would maybe think, for me, centre back would be more mm. of a priority than left back. I saw the other day a, a huge bid, £10 million, pounds, I think, from West Ham for Scott Hogan of uh, Brentford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I think somebody who, Dar Derby and yeah. there are other clubs who have looked at. Patrick I mean, Bamford, I've seen linked with Sheffield Wednesday again. Well, yeah, again, Still it's, it's possible. Chelsea. It's possible, but yeah, but he's had so many loan clubs. I, I, I feel sorry for him. He needs really now a permanent home. He I does. think he's 23. He's had, and at that age, he should be playing regularly, week in, week yeah. out. And if you're not going to make it at Chelsea, but by that age now, if you're not going to get a fair crack, then you need to move on, I think. Mm. There's another possibility. OK, 27 names. <laughs> 27 players. I'm, I'm not sure if you, you've heard of all of these, uh, Dom. One or two are going back a bit. David Ford, now that goes back a, a long way. That's 60s, yeah. eh? Yeah, David yeah, Ford. Terry Curran, Richard Cresswell, Derek Geary, Carl Bradshaw, Jeff King, Alan Quinn, your old teammate twice, John Paul McGovern, there's one. Uh, Earl yeah. Barrett, Owen Morrison, Chris O'Grady, Danny Bart, yeah. uh, I'd forgotten about that. Franz Carr, Brian Marwood, uh, Keith Tracy, Imri Varadi, Alan Warboys, that's a bit before your time. Alan Warboys, gotta be. Uh, Dean Windass, who you know, David yeah. Johnson, Tony McMahon, Wilf Rostron, Bernard Shaw, that's also another one going back. Carl Robinson, the one with a C, not the K. Simon Stainrod, Neil Ramsbottom, who's a goalkeeper, and Paul Heald, another goalkeeper. They've all played for both. Some of them have been on loan uh, to those clubs. And Lee Bromby, who I'd like to thank <laughs> so much for coming in. And he's the guy that's uh, got the history with uh, the only guy who's made over 100 starts for both. Uh, I've enjoyed that. Do you know how time's gone? Amazingly. Hey? Flies. Flies. We've done 45 minutes collectively, but that seems shorter than yeah. half of football. Mind you, it's depending on who you're watching, Don, isn't it, really? <laughs> yes, it can depend true. on who you're watching and what game. You'll be uh, at Middlesbrough this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for an FA yeah. Cup third round time. <laughs> so much to bear. Great enthusiasm. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Lee, as well. Thank it's you. been fascinating talking to you. Repeated this at 11 p.m. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel tonight if you missed any of it and do catch up with that. Next week is also going to be well worth a watch. See you then. Bye. Bye.